Hi, I'm Dan Carter Passy. Welcome to Layout Building. In this episode, I'm going to continue working on our N Scale Siren Creek project layout. This time, I'll be focused on installing ties for the hand laid track on the tunnel side of the layout. Our N Scale Siren Creek layout is designed to be small enough that Nicole and I can take it with us when we travel in our RV. It's also a way for me to do some model railroading while I'm waiting for the train room for my future HO scale layout to be completed. In the last episode, I installed a DCC command station, stationary decoders, frog juicers, and some basic wiring for the layout. In the next few episodes, I'm going to work on laying track. Because most of the turnouts and track work have custom geometries, and because of all the dual gauge, I'm going to hand lay the track. I'll be using several different types of wood ties from Clover House. Narrow gauge ties will be used for the NN3 track work. Turnout ties will be used for the turnouts and cut to length as needed. Standard gauge ties will be used for the standard and dual gauge track. Along with the wood ties, I'll be using Clover House PC board tie strips. These need to be cut to length. The PC board ties are solderable and will hold the rails. This is one of the standard gauge wood ties from Clover House. I'll put it in my small miter box and mark the length with a sharpie. Now I can use that mark to cut ties from the PC board tie strip. After cutting, I clean the ends up with a file. It's a little tedious, but after a while I have a nice pile of ties. Having a nice sharp razor saw blade helps a lot here. I didn't realize how dull my old blade was until I replaced it. I've used one of the narrow gauge ties to make a second mark. I'll cut some of those in the same way. PC board ties need to have gaps cut so that they don't cause a short circuit. I would rather not have the gap right in the middle, so I want to offset it to one side. I've put one of the standard gauge ties on a piece of Kato Unitrack for reference. If I measure about two end scale feet from the end of the tie, the gap would be close to one of the rails. I'll make a mark with a sharpie two scale feet from the end of the tie. Then I'll put the tie back in the miter box and cut it again. This time though, I only want to cut through the copper foil on one side, not all the way through. Now I have a tie with a gap. One way to test each tie is by putting the gap side in contact with a live DCC track. If the tie doesn't cause a short, then the gap is good. If it does short, then it needs to be cut some more. I found this neat little box at a hardware store. It has compartments that are perfect for holding all of the different lengths of PC board and wood ties that I'm using. Staying organized is a real time saver when doing work like this. I've built track by hand before, but never dual gauge. Before I tackle the dual gauge turnouts, I thought it would be good to start with something a little simpler. I'm going to start on the tunnel side and build the gauge separations on the track through the tunnels. A gauge separation is a specialized piece of track that transitions between dual gauge and two separate tracks. It looks similar to a turnout, but it has no moving parts. The narrow gauge always goes through one way and the standard gauge always goes through the other. This image shows how the gauge separation is set up electrically, with the blue and the red representing the two halves of the track circuit. Though it has no moving parts, it still requires an isolated frog to prevent shorts. I will need to gap the rails and cut gaps in the PC board ties in certain places to accomplish all this. Before I start building the gauge separation, I want to figure out approximately where the rails are going to be so I can figure out where the frog will be. Keeping a piece of N-scale Kato Unitrack lined up over the center of the roadbed, I can use a sharpie to mark the approximate rail locations. I've decided to place the narrow gauge toward the inside of the layout, which means that the paired dual gauge rails will be toward the outside. Using some Microtrain Z-Scale track, I can repeat the process. I'm lining up one rail on one of the standard gauge rails. Now I can connect the dots to approximate the locations for the rails. The frog is going to be about right here. Having all this drawn will help me figure out where to place the ties. I'll make a mark on the plywood where the frog will be. Then I'll make two more marks. Within this area, I'll need to use the longer turnout ties. Since it's been a while since I've built any hand laid track, I'm going to start by putting ties down on the curves just past the gauge separation. Most of the ties are wood, so I'm using yellow carpenter's glue. I'm not using a placement jig, I just eyeball the tie spacing. The tie spacing is more or less the same on the narrow gauge and the standard gauge. Every sixth tie is a PC board tie. That puts the PC board ties every inch or so, which I think should provide good support for the rail. In HO, I would probably use spikes, but even the smallest micro spikes that I know of are oversized for end scale. Spikes with Code 40 rail can also cause some flanges to bounce over the spikes. I'd originally considered using some microengineering Code 40 flex track for the standard gauge only portions of the layout, but I found that the spike head detail caused issues with some of my equipment. 
Most of my models have the newer lower profile flanges, but there are a couple older locomotives that I want to run on this layout that have deeper flanges. Past experience has taught me that Code 40 rail without spikes will work with most end scale equipment, even older stuff with deeper pizza cutter flanges. The ties should be centered on the roadbed center line. If you watched episode 4, which was about putting down the roadbed, I was careful to make sure that the roadbed center line followed the pencil lines I drew when transferring my track plan to the plywood. This is really important, as those center lines will determine the track placement. After I've done a stretch of ties, I use something flat like this scale rule to gently press them down onto the roadbed. The ties should be perpendicular to the center line. On curves, this will put each tie at a slightly different angle than its neighbor. The yellow glue dries slowly, so there's time to make adjustments as needed. I was initially concerned that the yellow wood glue wouldn't work so well on the PC board ties, but it seems to have made a good bond. For the gauge separation itself, the ties are going to be of varying lengths. I'll cut them to fit in place. I'll mark a PC board tie with a sharpie on the cut line. I'll mark it again where it needs to be gapped. Unlike the shorter regular ties, this tie needs two gaps. I'll be using more PC board ties in the frog area so that it has plenty of support. Since I have to cut these ties one at a time, I'm also gluing them one at a time. After some thought, I replaced a few of the wood ties with PC board ties. This is for some support in areas where I'll need to cut gaps in the rails later. It's better to have a few extra PC board ties than not have enough. The wooden turnout ties can be cut with a hobby knife. I've put ties down on both of the tunnel tracks. The second gauge separation is like the first in concept that both the standard and narrow gauge tracks are on curves. As I did with the other one, I've marked the approximate rail locations. Once again, I'm using the roadbed center lines as my guide. I'll fill in the ties one at a time, cutting them to length as I go. Siding down the roadbed is a good way to see if any ties get out of alignment. Now I have all the ties put down for a second grade separation. All the ties for the tracks through the tunnels are also in place. After letting the glue set up for a few hours, I'll give the tops of the ties a light sanding to help smooth out any variations in height. This will also clean the copper on the PC board ties. I'm pretty happy with how the layout is turning out so far. In the next episode, I'll install rails on the ties that I put down in this episode and I'll finish the gauge separations. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>